Hey guys, Cruxel. Welcome to part three of my in-depth Steam profile customization series. First things first, this is by far my most requested video I have ever gotten and I apologize for the wait. Thank you so much for being patient for those of you that have been waiting. It's a lot to cover and I wanted to make sure I did right by you guys by making the best possible tutorial I could, so that's why I've been putting off making it for so long. This video is most likely going to be my longest video yet and I will include timestamps in the description below to jump to different sections that I cover in this video. Before I jump into everything today, if you missed my previous two episodes of this series, please go back and watch those right now as I'll be glossing over certain aspects of the process as well as using tools that I mentioned in those videos without much explanation in this one. So today, as promised, I will be going over how to animate your Steam profile artwork showcase. This is the main thing that people want in a profile as it just takes it one step above those who have still images and you can really get creative with things, allowing you to have a special one of a kind Steam profile. The main methods that I use and go over in this video do require the use of Adobe Creative Cloud programs such as After Effects and Photoshop and that is only because these programs will allow you to achieve the best result. My goal is to help you guys get the best looking profile possible and that's just how it needs to be done. This is not meant to exclude any of you who can't afford these programs so I apologize that it has to be done this way. I am going to however show you a popular free way of making artwork in this video as well later on and although it may be more limited in terms of options it still is very good looking when done correctly that will be later on in the video though like i said and there will be timestamps in the description if you want to skip to that section immediately the method itself is quite a bit simpler than these other routes that you can take in all honesty and if you can't afford these adobe cc programs or can't find a way to get them online this should be your go-to with that being said adobe does offer a free month-long trial of all of its creative cloud applications so you can do that if you wish to do the more advanced and less limited method for animating Steam profiles. So part one is explanation slash setup before you even jump into this. When making an animation for your profile, there's a few key things you need to know before getting started. The process is simple, but the execution is where things can get a little time consuming and a bit confusing. You must first pick out a Steam background and get a cropped image of the background for your Steam profile using Steam.Design. I go over this in my previous installments of this series. Then you are creating the animations on top of that image and saving it as a video file. You are then taking that video file, importing it into Photoshop, and exporting once again as an optimized GIF image. That GIF file is then uploaded to your Steam profile and voila, you have an animated artwork showcase. It sounds daunting at first, I'm sure, but don't worry, Daddy Crux is here to hold your hand the whole way through. There are a few things you need to take note of before getting started that are crucial if you want to get the final result to look good. Number one, you need to be using an advanced compositing software like Adobe After Effects. You can also use an advanced non-linear editor, or NLE for short, such as Apple's Final Cut Pro, Avid Media Composer, or Adobe's Premiere Pro. No, I am not sponsored by these companies to promote them. Video titans like these are such big companies that they wouldn't need to sponsor a small fry like me. But the reason that I'm telling you you need to use these is because they offer the most options for tweaking and animating and allow you to set a custom size for the video, which is absolutely necessary for having a long animated artwork or any animated artwork in general. I may be wrong, but most free editing softwares, even including Apple's iMovie, do not allow you to set a custom size for your project or your video, and they simply won't work for that reason. Number two, you can only upload GIFs to Steam's network for your artwork, not video files. This limits you because higher quality GIFs rack up in file size very quickly depending on a few factors, and unfortunately you cannot upload files larger than 8 megabytes on Steam for your artwork. Keep this in mind because the length of your GIF will most likely not reach past 15 seconds because of this. For example, on my profile, I was able to tweak the settings quite a bit in the GIF exporting process and have about 13 seconds worth of animation before the file became too big. I literally think I'm at like 7.99 megabytes. I did a lot of tweaking to get it perfectly under that threshold. So keep that in mind if you want to have a lot of information like text or different animations popping in and out of your artwork. Number three, when it comes to picking out your background, prioritize ones with very little color range. Look at the background, specifically the area that the artwork profile will cover, and see how large the range of colors are in that image. You want something with a very uniform color scheme, meaning mainly one hue and not too much variance. The reason for this is because it will allow you to have a higher quality GIF as well as less artifacting on the final image. It basically is what makes your GIF look less professional and more ugly. For example, on my profile artwork, I chose a background that was basically just black and gray, and all the other subsequent colors on my artwork are just various shades of gray. That's what allowed me to have such a long GIF duration-wise with minimal artifacting. Now keep in mind this does not mean you can't have color, just try and make sure the colors in the image are very similar. Look at a color wheel if you need reference. This is going to be explained a lot more in depth further on in the Photoshop GIF exporting portion of the video. And number four, like I have stated in previous installments of this series, make sure to choose a background that fits your overall aesthetic that you're trying to achieve with your profile and doesn't have too much vignetting or black space that makes it just look boring and you have less to work with. Also, choose an image that you really like, as this process takes time and you don't want to be looking at an image after the fact and not like your work or the image you chose. You're just going to beat yourself up over all that time you wasted and end up restarting. 
So for part two, we have the After Effects animation. So firstly, I'm going to be going over making your animation in After Effects. As you may know, most animated profiles are done within After Effects, and that is because it's the most popular video compositing and visual effects program, I'd say, and has a seemingly unlimited amount of options and tools, as well as a plethora of plugins, presets, and tutorials that can be found on the internet to achieve pretty much any effect imaginable. It is definitely not the easiest thing to jump into or learn, but I'm showing you this method first because I think it's the most important to use if you want a beautiful Steam profile and have the most options available when you're in the creative process. Like I said before, if you can't figure out how to get it or can't afford it, they do offer a free month trial, so do that if you want to do this method and have no other way of getting it. So when you first launch After Effects, you will get a pop-up window asking what you'd like to do. Click on New Project. The next step depends on the image you're using for your background of this main artwork. Assuming you have downloaded a zip folder from your artwork from steam.design, which I go over in a previous video, unzip that folder to a location that you can remember, and right click on the main artwork image that should be titled artwork underscore middle, assuming you haven't renamed it. That's the main profile image that you're going to see on your artwork, the biggest one out of either the two or four that you choose, depending on the settings. When you right click it, if you're on Windows, click properties and then go to the details tab and you will see listed under image the exact pixel dimensions of the image in both width and height. If you're on Mac, go to Finder and navigate to the image. Right click or control click on it and select Get Info. Then expand the More Info section to see the dimensions of the image. If you're doing a square artwork, it should always have a height of 506 pixels and a width of 506 pixels. On Steam.Design, you can click the bottom and drag it so there are tons of possibilities what the height of your image is if you have a long artwork. So one thing that is certain is that no matter what, it should always be 506 pixels wide. The height is what would change. So once you've found those dimensions, keep track of them by writing it down or copying it. Go into After Effects, click Composition in the top taskbar, and then click New Composition. Name it whatever you'd like and make sure the preset is set to custom. Uncheck the box below that says lock aspect ratio because it's gonna try to lock it into a 16 by nine format which is most commonly used in film and on YouTube in general and any media creation. And enter in the exact pixel dimensions of your image you're using in your artwork. So if you do 506 by 506, it will end up as a square. And if not, you are going to use your other dimensions that you copied earlier. So for my example image that I'm using in this video, it is 506 pixels wide by 712 pixels tall. So that's what I'm gonna set it to. For frame rate, you can set that to whatever you'd like. I will say though, the higher the frame rate, the larger the final GIF will be because the GIF is basically combining all of those frames into the file. So if your image is super colorful or you're going for a long loop, set that lower to be sure. I made my current artwork for my profile 20 frames per second, if I remember correctly, which didn't make it look bad. It was a little bit choppy, but that's okay because my video file was so long I needed it to be or else the file will be way too big when I try to upload it. Set your composition to 15 seconds or 0, 0, 0, 15, 0, 0 in the box. That's how it should be formatted. You really don't need any more time than that. You simply couldn't have it any longer than that without surpassing that 8 megabyte limit on Steam unless you made it just look terrible quality. Remember, this is going to be looping, so it's not just a 15 second animation. It's just that's how long the loop is going to be. Now you can drag your image onto the timeline as the background. From here, you will use the text tool and animate anything else you'd like to on top of the video. The possibilities, like I said, are pretty much endless. And unfortunately, I can't go over keyframing or advanced animation techniques as this video is going to be long enough as it is. And there's just so much when it comes to After Effects. I am open to do videos specifically on different types of animations and things in After Effects. But honestly, by searching on YouTube, you're probably going to find way more proficient tutorials on animation and After Effects than me because I am still a pretty new user. I know how to do a fair bit, but when it comes to really advanced stuff, I have to look up tutorials myself. With that being said, there are a shit ton of free tutorials and presets to be found on YouTube and the rest of the internet that can be found with a simple search, so make sure you give that a go. This is really where you have to do the process yourself, as I can't be creative for you. That's kind of on your shoulders. I'd however love to direct you to another creator on YouTube that was really the OG channel for Steam profiles, and that is Sabuna. Feel free to check out his channel after watching this video, where he has a series that goes over top five Steam profiles of the week. And while you should never blatantly copy someone else's artwork, it can be a great series for some inspiration and to help get those creative juices flowing by seeing what others have accomplished. In fact, to prove I've been about it for a while, I actually was on his top five Steam profiles series when I didn't do YouTube or I was at least very new to it. And I was honestly super hyped. So I left that in the description there if you want to go see my old profile and what it was like. Second to last profile for today belongs to Cruxel with a very colorful and full of life profile. The animation is smooth and creative and the accents and small details throughout the whole profile is something to admire. But the series itself is full of really talented designers that are way better than me. And I often see some really cool stuff that inspires me to make more. 
He also has multiple Steam artwork templates that all look fire, which you are free to use according to his terms. He has videos showing you how to use them, and they are often as simple as opening an After Effects and replacing some elements of it with your own customized text and things of that nature. With permission from the man himself, I'm going to use one of his recent templates to show you the process for this video. Part 3. Using Templates and Exporting in After Effects Alright, so I have pulled up his template 9 that he made, and I downloaded this, which was for an older version of Creative Cloud for After Effects, so that's okay. I'm just going to hit OK on here, and it's going to load in this project. So as you can see, he made this for Square, and I'm going to show you guys how to do the long artwork and how to kind of manipulate things like this so when you download a template, you know how to use it. But that being said, if you want to go out and learn After Effects, you're going to get some pretty cool stuff, and it's going to feel good to do your own effects. But for now, if you're new, templates are the way to go, and you can get a bunch of free resources and things of that nature just by searching, like I said. So when I pull this up, it's Square, and I want to make it the exact dimensions of my image. So I'm going to go to Composition in the top taskbar, Go down to composition settings and right here where it's 506 by 506, which is correct for a square artwork, I'm going to change my height to 712 because like I said, my artwork is 712 pixels tall. I'm going to keep the frame rate at 30 because this is only a 10 second loop and I think that's going to be fine in the final image in terms of size. So I'll click OK. And now, as you can see, when I zoom out by just scrolling on the actual composition window, you can scroll up and down to zoom in and out you can see it's the long size. So to make sure it matches up, I'm gonna click my artwork and drag it onto the timeline here. And it's probably gonna put it over my artwork. So I'm gonna click it and drag it under because this is sort of a hierarchy of how things are organized. Now the image is under there and it is the perfect size. When I go through and see the corners, it's all lining up perfectly. You don't want any black pixels or background that's just not showing the image because that's gonna make it look shitty and unprofessional. So right here it says click here to edit text. So how most things work is it's going to be a composition file where they basically made the template and you just edit the different aspects of it. So I'm going to double click that and it'll bring me into the composition window. So to get back to that, all you need to do is click back to the top left. It says render comp to go back and forth there. So you can see these are my different things I'm working with. And basically how After Effects works is a composition is different from the final render or the final scene. This is just the different aspects of the text that I'm seeing right now. So I'm going to click this and go to edit outline. I'm going to double click that and it's going to pull up the text thing. I'm just going to put in Cruxel. I like this font already. You can change the font as well, but make sure you keep track of the exact changes that you have because you have to also go into the fill here. Double click that. It goes into edit fill. And now when I click main fill here, I just type in Cruxel as well. And that's because that's the white fill. If not, it would just show up as name flashing over my name. So we'll go back to the top left here, like I said, and go back and just watch it so far. So there, that looks pretty fucking sick. Now you can also change the bottom text here. Everything is customizable in his presets, which is awesome. I'm going to say shout out Sibuna with a little heart. And now when I go back to my full render, you can see it says that. So now if I want to move this, you just make sure you're on the move tool. And if you want to align it, you go to window, turn on align, and it'll bring you this little window in the bottom. And you just click this horizontal center alignment to make sure it's all centered because as you know, you want that all centered. So I kind of like the text there up in the clouds for this image and I'm going to keep it that way. So we'll go through and press play and watch the full thing. Again, this is a 10 second loop, a pretty simple effect, but it looks clean and just having it animated elevates it just that much more. So I like it, but I'm also going to resize this. So we're going to click it and hold shift. So we're going to resize that. Make sure it is aligned in the middle again and watch it right here. Perfect. That's cool. And this perfectly loops, so I don't want to change it. But if your composition is more than your actual clip, just click this work area and shorten it to the very end. And that way you're not going to have a bunch of just blank screen at the end of your render. So you're going to go up here to file, export. You can add to the Adobe Media Encoder queue, which is going to render it a bit quicker. Or if you just have After Effects and you didn't download the trial or own Media Encoder by Adobe, you can just add to your render queue right here. Honestly, just keep it on the best settings. You can rename it to whatever you'd like. I'm going to rename it to example artwork and click save. So then you just go to the right here, click render, and it's going to do its thing. This one's going by super quickly because there wasn't too many effects. As you can hear there, it finished. And there's just so much you can layer on here. Just make sure that you keep in mind a couple of simple things. Your composition is different from the final render. So preview it in this. 
and this is a hierarchy here meaning whatever is on top is going to be seen on top of other things so if you're stacking effects do so accordingly with this actual hierarchy here on the side so that wraps it up for the after effects portion of this video make sure that before you move on from after effects though save your project you should be doing that regularly anyways and that's so you can go back and fix any issues you might have during this next step or change text and things of that nature save it in a location that's easy to remember and access simply saving it though won't actually create the video so you do have to render that footage out via after effects or media encoder like i said before you can move on to photoshop and if you don't save and it crashes you can lose some precious time and work i've learned this the hard way multiple times and i still forget sometimes so i just wanted to help you guys remember now on to part four which is the photoshop gif exporting slash settings overview and it will be the same process with any video file you use so you guys do not have to use after effects that was just the example i shown you but like i said you can use other non-linear editors like final cut and things of that nature and get the same effects so this is what you actually do to convert the video to gif there are online websites to convert video to GIF as well as free programs you can download, but nothing comes even close to Photoshop in terms of the options available when you're converting, and the GIF will without a doubt look worse when you use something besides Photoshop. So to start, find your video file that you just exported of your artwork and drag that down into Photoshop. It might load for a second and say reading video format or something along those lines, and once that's done, it's all loaded in. A timeline window should appear at the bottom as well as the current frame of your video displayed in the workspace. And it might look really pixelated, but that's normal. It's not going to end up looking like that in the end. That's just to save RAM, since working on video in Photoshop eats that shit up like you would not believe. The entire process of animation was done earlier in your compositing software or NLE, so you don't have to do anything to this in Photoshop. Just go up to the top left and navigate to the file in your top taskbar. Click export and then save for web in parentheses legacy. If that does not pop up for you or is grayed out, you can hit alt shift control s to bring up the same menu and that pops up the save for web interface, which is what we're going to use to export as a GIF. There are a lot of settings in this interface and I'm going to go kind of in depth in all of them so you get to know what they do. I am also going to link a video in the description that goes really in depth as well on making really high quality GIFs where you can find some valuable info on these settings, but it honestly doesn't help too much to have the best settings when you have a certain threshold to be under for file size like we do when making these artworks. First things first, make sure the file type selected up top is set to GIF, not JPEG or PNG. Next, go to the very bottom right and set your looping option to forever. This makes it to where you can easily preview your GIF in this window on a loop as well as have it loop in your actual profile when you post it. If not selected, it will just run its course once and then pause on the final frame, turning it into a still image. So that would kind of ruin the point of having an animation. At the bottom left of the preview window is an estimate of your file size once you have saved it with your current settings in place. Remember, you cannot go over 8 megabytes for Steam. Also, this figure is not an exact match, but the actual size in the end is pretty damn close. Under that box that you set to GIF up top is where you're going to choose your algorithm for color reduction in your GIF. Videos rendered in After Effects and other editing suites tend to have thousands or even millions of colors represented in any given frame, but GIFs are different in that they can only support up to a certain amount of colors. So when converting, Photoshop basically chooses the most common colors throughout the image, the amount of which is dictated by your settings, which I will go over in a second, and analyzes all the pixels that aren't those specific colors and sets them to the nearest match. These algorithms all have different looks and produce different file sizes, so play around with what looks best to you, but I'd recommend sticking to adaptive if you can, that's what usually looks best for me. You can see how the different algorithms affect the image by looking at the live preview and just click the play button in the bottom right and it should start looping through and you can see and go through each one of them. Really focus on where the lighting or color changes drastically in the image as all GIFs have that sort of cloudy look that you're trying to minimize by changing these algorithms. To the right of that box is where you select the amount of colors to be used in your GIF. The more colors you allow, the smoother the image looks and the less banding you're going to have as a whole. Banding is the term for the harsh separation of colors that you see once the colors have been reduced for your GIF file. This also makes your file size bigger as well if you choose a higher value. So it's about finding a balance between this and the other settings to keep that final GIF below 8 megabytes. 256 colors is obviously going to be the best, but 128 should suffice as well. And I really would not recommend dipping below 64 colors as it starts to look really, really bad. If you're old enough, it might even evoke memories of browsing porn on your old dial-up modem back in the day. Can't even discern where that nipple ends and where the boob starts. Anyways, the long box under that next to the dither option, which might be grayed out currently, is where you set your dither algorithm. With no dither, it keeps the GIF the way it is currently and doesn't change anything. That's why the dither intensity setting is grayed out if this is selected. This is nice to have off for file size reasons, but it makes the transition from color to color look harsh, giving off a sort of wave effect, which is once again called banding. Dithering places and rearranges pixels with two different colors to give off the effect of a third color being present in between them. It kind of tricks the eyes and makes the colors in the image blend together more smoothly. There are three algorithms to choose from, and much like the color reduction algorithms, they each give off a different look and have different file sizes as a result. 
Depending on the colors in your image and how it looks with your current color reduction algorithm, you might not even need to dither. Sometimes it truly does look better without one. Once you apply the dither, it smooths out the transitions of color, but it also adds a sort of pixelated look to your image. You can click the plus icon in the bottom left of the window to zoom into your image and see how closely each algorithm affects the look once again. Adding a dither can greatly increase your file size as well, and it might bump you over that 8 megabyte threshold, however, even though it is going to improve the colors in your image. Going to the window to the right and setting your dither intensity can decrease the file size, or if the dither effects look a little harsh, you can turn it down. I found that even lessening it to 99% as opposed to 100% can cut the file size nearly in half, and under that, make sure transparency is checked on. It shouldn't have an effect on your file whether or not it's on, but having it on decreases the file size. Keep the matte color to the right of that set to white. The next option is your transparency dither algorithm. Just keep that set to no transparency dither, since you should not have any transparency in your image in the first place. The interlaced option below that should be unchecked as well, and the web snap threshold should be kept at zero percentage if at all possible, but increasing it can allow you to have a bit of smaller of a file size. Whatever percentage you have it set to tells Photoshop how much it's allowed to shift the colors in your image to optimize it a bit more. So while having it high may lower your file size, it will start to distort your colors and make it look really bad. Lossy, the other box right next to that, is another useful tool for cutting file sizes, and the percentage you set that at tells Photoshop how much data it can delete from the image, basically. You can usually get away with up to 15% or so on this setting before you start to see noticeably worse quality in the image. When it comes to the final efforts to decrease file size, I'd increase your lossy intensity before increasing web snap in that order because that will reduce your file size and get you the cleanest image. The convert to sRGB option below that should be turned off, and you can keep the preview and metadata information set to their defaults. Below those settings is your color table where you can see which colors Photoshop has selected as the most prominent and the only colors that are actually displayed in your GIF at this point. You can manually go in and change colors by adding or removing them, but that is something I don't personally do, nor is it a simple task. And usually the quality gain in the end is not worth the effort either, so leave it be. The table is great for reference though when deciding on how many colors to allow in your GIF. The image size portion of this menu should remain untouched, just leave those at defaults as well. And just make sure that the width and height dimensions match up with the original dimensions you got when you checked your starting image earlier on in the tutorial. Remember no matter what that it should always be 506 pixels wide. Now that all the settings are explained, make sure that the estimated file size in the bottom left is below 8 megabytes. If it isn't, like I said earlier, you really just have to toy around with the settings I mentioned above and find a balance between quality and file size. If you play around with all of it and you cannot get it under 8 megabytes without having a terrible looking image, go back into your editing software and either change the duration of the clip or better yet, just lower the frame rate and re-export. You will have to re-render that new video, drag it into Photoshop, open up this save for web menu all over again, so it is super time consuming, so make sure that you're generous at first when you're making your video in terms of having a short duration and limited range of colors like I was saying. Sometimes no matter what you try, the file size is just too big. At that point, you just either have to take the L and export a low quality GIF or restart the whole process. This is actually one of the reasons I decided to revamp my profile earlier this year, was originally I chose a background that had a ton of different shades and colors and the quality of the GIF was just not up to my standards. So once you have the estimated size under 8 megabytes and it looks how you want it to look, Double check that the looping option is set to forever and click save. The format should be set to images only and you can name it to whatever you want. Once again, keep it in a place that you can find it and access easily in your files later on. Part 5. Uploading your artwork to Steam Finally, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the promised land. The work is done, assuming you have no typos or arrows and are happy with the final GIF result, you're all ready to go. Once again, I will mention that the uploading process for this artwork is super simple on Chrome if you use the Steam.Design Buttons plugin. It is free and 100% safe, and you can find a link for it in the description below. Once you've added the plugin to Chrome, navigate once again to your Steam profile, click on Artwork on the right side menu, then Upload Artwork, and select Not Game Specific to ensure that your artwork doesn't get removed by some Game Hub moderator. When you select a file, a button should appear to the right of the title box that says Upload a Long Image. Click that before you finalize and post this artwork and it will inject the necessary changes to the web page to allow you to upload the full long image properly. If you don't trust me or don't want to install the plugin for any reason, you can manually go into inspect element on the page by hitting F12 and input the changes for the web page yourself. I'm not personally going to go over that in this video because you can find it easily elsewhere and it's a cumbersome, outdated process. If you have square artwork, you can just upload the artwork like normal, but if it is longer than 506 pixels, you do have to use one of these methods to upload it or else it simply won't work. Name your work, fill out a description if you'd like, and check the box at the bottom to certify you made the art. Visibility must be set to public in order to use this in your showcase. Now just click save and continue at the bottom and you're good to go. Change your profile background in your settings as well as make your primary artwork slot that new image 
and it might not load properly when you're choosing it it'll show up as a thin line maybe but once you save it to your profile the changes will be made and it will look normal and proper once it's done assuming you did everything correctly you can use the steam.design buttons plugin to upload the side image for your profile as well just undergo the same process with either a still image or gif if you choose to animate your sidebar or image like i did the image should always be exactly 100 pixels wide for the sidebar as well and should share the same height as your main artwork part six the free alternative for artwork so for those of you who don't want to undergo the large process I just mentioned previously or don't have access to these programs required to make an advanced Steam artwork, there is a very popular free alternative as well that can produce an alright looking result with much less effort. You are however stuck with very little options for customization as well as the fact that it's not very unique at all, seeing as many people use the same method and there's only so many different looks you can achieve with it. Simply download your zip folder of your artwork from steam.design. Once that is unzipped to an easy to reach location, open up your web browser and go to giphy.com slash create. That's G-I-P-H-Y dot com slash create. All right, guys, so we are on the Giphy website right now, and I'm going to show you how to make this very easily for free. You're going to go to choose photo or GIF and select your artwork underscore middle file. It can be any length. You can have it as a long artwork still, and it's going to pop up this menu for you to customize it. So this is where I say you have a pretty limited amount of options. I mean, you do have these different styles and you can achieve good effects. There's only a finite amount of combinations you can do. And once you see this and know that of this method, you're going to see a lot of profiles doing the same thing. People aren't very original when they do this, but it is a free way to do it. So it's still a viable option. So I'm just going to enter my name and you can choose the font here. I don't know why you would ever go with like Comic Sans or even this bullshit, but pixel usually looks pretty good. Subtitle looks pretty clean. I'm probably going to go with subtitle. You can resize it. It's a very simple to use menu system, which is nice, super simple and straightforward. And then at the bottom, you have your animation. You can have it still. But like I said, this is an animated profile. So you want to add some cool shit to it. So we can have a 3D sort of wave effect there rainbow this flashing thing the other thing is the loop on these is like half a second so you're not going to be able to have a very interesting long animation and a lot of it looks pretty simple the glitch does look pretty clean i do like glitch art so i'm going to go with that for now you can go over to the stickers tab and find stickers let's just look up welcome because i wanted to say welcome somewhere and as you can see you're you're kind of strapped with like some early internet trash gifts i don't really know what you're expecting from this website but i mean we're going to try to find one that looks a little clean. Um, this one's blue and it goes with the theme, so we'll go with this. We'll drag that to the little bottom, resize it. I think you can rotate, maybe. Yep, you can rotate. There's no actual locking guides, I don't believe. We'll put welcome right under my name. And I have no idea if that's lined up in the middle. I'm playing it by eye. It looks pretty darn close, so we'll just go with that. Um, and then you can also add different filters and that's kind of where you get some good combinations too But just know that when you change the color like this It's not gonna line up with your actual background very well So you might want to just keep it like to a bad TV effect or you can I can add more glitches to it That's a bit too glitchy for me I'm actually just gonna keep the name animation and that's gonna be fine as well as being able to draw on it like snapchat um, So you can do that if you'd like but I'm not gonna personally do that So then you just go to the bottom right click continue to upload you can add tags, but I'm just gonna upload it to Giphy it does its thing, kind of exports your whole video. You can see the progress bar here. I do got to give props to Giphy for making this tool because it actually is super simple to use and helps those who don't have the time or want to spend the effort into making a great profile animation so where they can at least do it. Do note though, guys, that a lot of people try to do this shit and like sell you animations. So once you're aware of it, make sure you're not getting scammed. If you're paying for artwork, you want it to be quality. So I've seen people charging like $10, $15 per artwork doing this method. I can tell because it's like the stock effects and it just is bullshit. So make sure you avoid that if you can. So then you just right click and you can just save it as a GIF. So just like my previous methods, once you have saved that artwork, you can proceed to upload it using the steps I laid out in part five of this video. Refer down to the timestamps in the description below if you skip past it and don't know how to do that. Part seven, outro slash final thoughts. So finally, thank you guys so much for sticking around to the very end of this video. If you watch the whole thing, I do apologize for the length and for throwing at so much information out at you guys at one time. I know that can be stressful and a lot to take in, but I just wanted to make this as cohesive and complete as I possibly could. So if you have any questions related to the overall process or major points I go over in this video, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I will try to answer as many as I can. With that being said, I will not be responding to super specific tech support related questions because there's just so much bullshit in these programs that can go wrong 
and I can't have the knowledge or time to find a fix for random stuff like that. I would say you should refer to online forums in that case, as I'm sure someone else has had the same problem as you, and hopefully someone has found a fix for them. When it comes to further customizing your profile, like I said earlier, there are a ton of good sites where you can find both free and paid assets to use in your artworks, such as title presets, templates, stock footage, particles, and so much more. And just make sure you are following the creator's guidelines always and not blatantly ripping anyone off. I'm going to include a few notable sources for elements to use in your artworks down in the description, so check those out if you want to see what they have to offer. Some are free, some are paid. You can animate artwork in pretty much any advanced compositing software or NLE like I said, just make sure you have control over the video dimensions and frame rate as those are the main things you need, and follow the same process in Photoshop directly after exporting your video. For those of you that stuck around to the very end of the video, I have a special giveaway that I am hosting in celebration of this video, since it took a shit ton of work and I'm really proud of this series. I am going to make custom artwork for one lucky viewer. To enter to win, click the link in the description and fill out the Google form that I have created, simple as that. I'm going to pick one entry in a week's time and I will contact that winner via Steam. I wish the best of luck to all of you. Please note that you do have to have at least level 10 so you can have a showcase and your background already picked out and bought. That does it for today's video. Let me know how much you were able to learn from this. Hopefully it was a lot. With that being said, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and drop a like if this video helped you out, as well as turn on post notifications because that's the only real way to ensure that you get access to my videos right away as the sub boxes on YouTube have been a little bit fucked up recently. Once again, I'm Cruxel. Thank you guys so much for watching.